I was listening to a piece of music that a friend of mine did, and it had a sax solo in it, and it sounded so real. And I was wondering, what software did she use to get that sound? And I asked her, and she said, I use Band in a Box. And I thought that was interesting because I've been using Band in a Box since it came out, but I've never generated a solo with it. I've never used the soloist feature. It got me thinking. The saxophone is one of the hardest instruments to turn into a virtual instrument. And to get the most out of even one of the very best ones, you need to know a lot about how a saxophone is played and the kind of sounds it makes. Short of actually hiring a sax player, I think that Band in a Box just might be your best option in creating a sax solo for your tracks. After all, it's real sax players playing along with your chords. That sounds great, but there is one minor problem with that, and that's because while the pieces of the sax solo are completely real, the stitching together of those pieces into a full solo. Well, the choices on that are all done by a computer algorithm. It's a very intelligent computer algorithm, but it's not a human being, it's not a musician, it's certainly not an artist. And you may find, even if you generate lots of solos using the program, you may not be entirely happy with any of them. So how do you get band in a box to do what you want. Let's go through the process of generating a sax solo in band in a box. This is the song I'm going to use to generate the band in a box solo. First thing I can show you is that it's based on three tracks from Band in a Box. That's really important that I have that as my foundation because I'm going to be making the solo from those three tracks and I want my song to be built on that. Now, later on, I'm going to remove all the Band in a Box stuff, but I need to have that there so that what I do play will match up with the solo. And it's pretty simple. It's these band in a box tracks. It's a piano. And then there's two horn ensembles from Project Sam's swing libraries. So let me play it to you. It's only 16 bars. <laughs> So why only 16 bars? Because I only need a 16 bar solo. If I were to create this solo using a whole song with verses and choruses, it would take a lot longer. So I'm going to be working with this and when I'm done, I'll be able to just cut and paste the sax solo into my final song. This is a simplified version of the chords to my song. The first thing you want to do when you're making your soloist is to find the right one. That's the most important thing. So you hit the soloist button here and you take the first option, which is add best real track soloist to soloist track. And that brings you here. Now there are two other ways to do that. You can go up to the soloist menu and you can either click soloist, generate a play as solo, or there's a keyboard shortcut, shift F4. But then when you do that, you still have to click best real tracks. So the fastest thing to do is to just go here to soloist and here's where you are. Now, you can see that there's all these different kinds of instruments, uh, guitars, fiddle, harmonicas, mandolin, all kinds of, even vocals. But you're only interested in sax. And then the way this thing is set up 
is that the algorithm tells you that the ones at the very top are the best match. And uh, as you go down, it says swing, even feel doesn't match, genre doesn't match, genre and swing, even feel doesn't match. But, you know, that may not matter to you because, for example, I didn't write a Texas blues rock, rock shuffle, you know, tune. That's not going to be right for me. And if you want to know what these things sound like, you just hit this here. You know, and you can go along and hear anything. And, and that's your first step to finding out if it's the kind of thing you're looking for. But what I do is I start filtering it a little bit because I don't want a soprano sax, I don't want a baritone sax. I mean, so if I put alto, which is my favorite choice, I could also put tenor. And I know that I want jazz because that's the kind of thing it is. So already it's getting a lot easier. And I can tell you that this is the one I picked. So I'm going to say OK and generate a track, and it sounds like this. Now, if you go into the soloist menu and generate and play a solo, there are a lot of options here, uh, but most of them have to do with how it would play if you were just creating an accompaniment. So for example, you could trade fours or you could trade eights or trade twos. So if you were playing, say, a piano and you wanted to trade four bars with with the saxophone then this you could set it up that way and you can also tell it if you want it to be in the middle and at the end but i'm just going to be taking the sax solo out of there and using it where i want now there's also this thing called a soloist maker and this gives you a lot of different options phrase length so it's saying that your phrases are defaulted at four beats to 24 beats. So you could, you could make that longer. You could make it eight, you could make it 12, and you might like it better. You could also add more space between the phrases. You'd have to change this percentage and also the length in order to do that. But none of that really matters to me because I'm going to have very, very surgical control over what the solos will be using Cubase, my DAW. So, so I'm gonna go out of this and I'm going to generate a solo. I'm reasonably happy with the way that starts. So then I'm going to left click at the top where it says sax, and I'm gonna drag it directly into Cubase. In fact, I'm going to generate five more solos and drag them all into Cubase. There's no particular reason for having six solos. You could do less, you could do more. You might wanna play all six tracks just to hear how it sounds. got a kind of nice New Orleans feel to it, but more than likely you'd rather mute the rest of the tracks and then play one of them as a solo. If you look at what it actually going on, you can see that this waveform looks quite a bit like this one, and this waveform looks a lot like this one. So 
you get the idea of what's going on. They have all these little blobs of audio. They're just rolling the dice to pull some kind of a solo out. Now, it may work perfectly for your song, or it may not. So if none of the solos come out the way you like them, one option would be to start slicing and dicing them until you're happy with it. That might be a lot of work, though. So my suggestion would be to try and find a way to comp it. Now, I can't comp separate tracks in Cubase. So here's what I do instead. I select all six of the tracks, and then I'm going to right-click in the lane of the sixth saxophone part. This brings up a menu, and from this menu, I choose Add Group Channel to Selected Channels, and I give it a name. So all my sax solos feed into this single channel, and then I'm going to send that channel to a new audio track, which will become the track that will hold all six of the solos in separate lanes ready for comping. So I'm going to mute all of the tracks except for the very first one. I've left a little bit of extra room here into these cycle areas, and you'll see why later. So start recording on this audio file now. So it's recording the very first saxophone. So when I get to the end, I'm going to mute it, and I'm going to solo the next track. So. And that's becoming lane two of the sax comp. Now this is going to get boring, so I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to watch it all. What's happening is that it's like I'm making a live saxophone player play the solo over and over again while I keep recording until there's six takes of the solo. I need to do that so that I can take those six separate tracks from Band in a Box and turn them into a form that's ready for comping. Okay. So now I have six lanes that I can then work with. And if I take my comp tool, which is the hand, I can start selecting my favorite parts. If you don't know about comping, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that show you how to do it. I'll put some links to them below. But anyway, this is the easiest way that I know of to create a good sax solo in Band in the Box, as well as a good solo for any instrument in Band in the Box. In this exercise, I've been using a very short solo. But I think what you'll find, that if you want a really long solo, it will become increasingly harder to do. So what I recommend in that situation is to trade the solo off with other band-in-a-box soloists. Let's see how that works. So if you're looking to do an instrumental that's 32 bars long or even, even longer than that, and you're start opening yourself up to other instruments, you may find out that some of them make it a lot easier to create a solo. So I'm just going to type jazz in here 
to filter and I'm going to just say piano and I'm going to generate piano solo. That sounds pretty good. So let's try another one. How about a trombone? guitar so if it's really important to you to have a long instrumental in your song and you can't get the saxophone part to keep going and sound interesting and sound real you can trade solos with one of the other band in a box soloists and get some really great results. So what are you waiting for? Go out and make a really great sax solo with band in a box. Thanks for listening. I'm Tiger the Frog.